Hello and welcome to Kitty News, where I talk about the things that has happened this week in Kitty Plasma and also a little bit look at the code. So if you're interested in contributing, well, maybe it will make that a little bit easier. Also, I have just recorded a video about me eating chips because it's actually one year since I first started the channel. So if you're interested in me having fun and uh, insulting myself, then go check it out. I published it yesterday, unless I change the video order later on. Let's get to the changes. This one is rather boring. So let's uh, close the full screen and see if there's something more interesting to start with, which is this one. This is something very nice to some people. I personally don't see the point, but other people do. And I'm actually really happy that we do have this feature now. Thanks to, by the way, the Ferran OS developer. So if you like Ferran OS, well, or if you don't know about Ferran OS, the developer is very, very, very active in the VDG group. So it's not something that all of these from interners do. So that's very nice. Now, <coughs> Breeze can adapt your title bar color color to the accent color that you have. So if you select blue, they're uh, the title bars are going to be blue. If you select red, they're going to be red. If you select gray, they're going to be gray, which is very nice. Now, this is not enabled by default. Uh, you have to select in the color scheme Breeze Classic. And if you're into these things, then go check it out. It will probably be in uh, Plasma 5.25, which releases in about three months. And uh, I mean, what else to say? It's a nice feature to have, I think. I won't personally use it, but still. The next one is this one. I'm sorry that I don't have like all of the things in order, but it's the second time I record this video and I'm bored. And uh, this change, I think, is a very small change, but it's one of those things that truly really have a big impact. So when I'm taking screenshots, and I'm selecting an area to take a screenshot from, I think it's very important to actually see what area you're selecting. And this simple change simply goes from this to this, where the part that you're selecting is much, much lighter compared to the background. And that's really nice. And the best thing is that <coughs> code-wise, it's really simple, as we'll see. But first of all, let's see all of the changes. This one might excite you slightly, I mean, as far as case style changes can be exciting. There is now a little bit of margin around the menus. So now they're slightly bigger, but not too big, not like touch input big. And uh, you can see that the highlight now looks a little bit pre prettier. Now, personally, I actually had some issues with this merge request because if you go see, zoom in the line, this line here doesn't actually touch the borders and it did before. And personally, I'm not a super big fan of lines that do not actually stretch to width, but you know, people were very happy with this and that's fine. This one, so if you use, I think Intel, you should have P-State, which is the ability of selecting power saving, a bit like in GNOME 2, and you can select like performance or battery saving, and now there are icons to actually help you understand which one is this, which one is which. If you don't know what performance means, now this icon will actually help you uh, get it. Now there's a bit of discussion actually on what a power icon should look like. This is the proposal, but there's also like this, which is nice. These are other proposals. I think that they all look very promising. Personally, I still think maybe the lighting is very nice, but this one here also looks very good. Let me actually zoom in so you can see it better. Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Next one, this zoom thing is killing me. Okay, so this. Now, as you should know by now, if you open up the audio applet, you will actually be able to see the volume of the microphone and of the speaker as you're actually speaking or hearing, I don't know, music you actually see the line going left and right depending on the volume as it changes live, which is a very nice feature. But when it first was implement implemented, it looked broke because there was like literally no line between here and here. It was completely empty and it just looked broken. Now it was fixed by doing this, 
but it wasn't really actually easy to see. But then the actual fix, I think this one was done and I think it looks much better. So it is the highlight, highlight but it is actually filled for the volume. This looks, in my opinion, perfect and I'm super, super happy about this change. Lastly, this is the before, this is after, before, after, before, after. Do you see the change? It's very small. Look at softer and harder, and now they're slightly smaller and bolder. In general, there has been in the past years a lot of like people being not too happy with using bold in the interface, but that has changed and I think this change is representative and I think it's a good step in the right direction. So plus one, and now we see the code. So let's start with the most interesting one, which is, I have a duplicate, this one. So let's go see this one. So it's done through masks. So you're having a rectangle and then a bigger rectangle, which is uh, has a hole inside of it. Those are two masks and they do have a color. The first one goes 0, 0, 0, which is black. And then there's the transparency, actually the opacity, which goes from being dot 15 to dot five. So the black got blacker, darker. And here we've got white, which is the area actually inside of the inner rectangle. And then its opacity goes from being 100 to 127 which is higher, so it's actually whiter. It's as easy as that. But I think it's a big change for people taking screenshots. And I don't think that we, I, I think there are many people taking screenshots. This one cannot be explained because everything concerning Q styles, K styles, sorry. It's actually super easy. Sorry, forget about that. It's actually super easy. And, uh, we just have to, well, of course we add a constant, which is the gap between the, around the menu, sorry. And I guess that what we are doing here is that we have this function pixel metric, which is all about, um, I think actually getting all of the margins and uh, it's done by actually asking which margin it needs inside of this variable. So we do a switch in that variable. And if we're being asked for the margin H and margin V, so horizontal and vertical, then we return the constant that we defined here. Super simple. What do you need to know to do this patch? Well, the case style API, which is complex, but the actual change is simple. So maybe if you ask somebody who knows, they can guide you into actually doing something. <clears throat> this one is slightly weirder, weirder. That is, okay. The first change is easy. So we've got the slider and it has to become opaque from being not as opaque. So we just remove the opacity 0 0.5. Doing this opacity gets defaulted to one. That's easy. Change number two, the inner line needs to be filled. Now, if we take the SVG, there is actually no filled version of this. So how is it actually done? It's all magic of this plasma core frame SVG selected. And to understand what that does, we need to read, read the API. So we Google plasma core frame SVG item and we get the documentation, the class reference, which I personally often use. And then we search for the status property, which is going to explain where is it status here, even selected. SVGs can be colored with system color themes, which Breeze does by default. If the status is selected, the text color will become highlighted text color and the background color will become highlight color. So what was the text color, which is like black becomes highlighted, so blue. And what was the background color, which is white become, becomes highlighted, which is blue or whatever your accent color is. So that is actually where the fill comes from. This one, lastly, super simple. We just change the level. You know, it's a bit like Markdown or HTML where titles have a H something and that something is the level or in Markdown, Markdown, the amount of um, whatever you call them. Yeah, those are the level and we actually in, um, make it bigger 
a bigger number. Surely there's a word for it, but right now it just doesn't pop up to my mind. You make the number bigger, you make the level higher, and that means that it's smaller. It's a bit counterintuitive, but that's how it works. And then you change the header type to, to being when it's actually a section, otherwise we don't care, but when it's a section, then it's primary. And by the API of Kurigami headings, I, a primary Kurigami heading is bold, and that's where the bold, boldness comes from. And that was it. Only this change is uh, lasting, but remaining, lasting, come on. But uh, it's super complex and I won't get to it. So that was everything. Hopefully it was interesting. And pretend you didn't see that, just pretend, please. It's uh, 23.30, it's late. And if I'm here to record this video, it's surely thanks a lot to all of the people that actually donate because that helps me. I'm a student, I'm not able to do this as, I don't know, full-time, this is an hobby in my free time. And if I had to, I don't know, go actually get an actual job that I wouldn't be able to do this. So if you want to be sure that the video keeps on coming, consider donating something. And those people who donate, either through PayPal, uh, if you ask me, or via Patreon every week or so, get access to a secret Telegram group with some secret content, which is actually early preview for everyone. So if you're interested, there's also benefits and see you tomorrow, hopefully with another video, subscribe, blah, 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 all the YouTuber stuff.